Reed on here back again. Okay, um, well, I had me a little break and I ate me a little snack. I realized I was getting hungry and I might better eat something if I want to continue working. And uh, I rebooted everything, the phones, the router, modem, everything. And um, got my laptop turned on because uh, I realized while I was, uh, I'll go here on the desktop. I uh, realized while I was eating, I was reading this page right here. Well, the one that this is the one I kept talking about, seeing like they were just seeing the three dots. And so I think I'm going to try something on this page, and but I need to be able to do it in the terminal over there on the machine. Well, I can do it on remote terminal, but I need to be able to see the instructions at the same time as I'm doing it. Uh, actually, no, I need to do it on the machine, and I'll kind of go into what it is I need to do here. Uh, I think I'm hopefully I found the answer to my particular problem here. Now this this Net Pro Max is a older machine, uh, <coughs> has what they call legacy BIOS <coughs> nowadays, <coughs> and uh, that I think might be the key. <coughs> uh, it's uh, again 2.8 gigahertz Celeron single core with two gig RAM and what they call now right? it's a BIOS. They call it legacy BIOS. But uh, in uh, when they came out with the EUFI, I think if that's the right letters to say, uh, they said this is not a BIOS, this is something else, you know. But anyway, they just they just call it EUFI and legacy BIOS now. So um, that's what everybody says when they write about it. Um, someone had the same problem as me here, and uh, they're on a laptop though, and uh, they saw the three dots, and they thought it might have to do with their NVIDIA card and all this stuff. Uh, they say NVIDIA card, but it's really, this is a laptop, so it's an onboard NVIDIA chip. No PCI card there. Um, but you know, you, people just say that a lot of times when they do know what they're talking about. Now right here it says, uh, the, the three dots you are seeing is actually a, ply, I'm gonna just keep saying Plymouth because that's what I've always called it. I think you might supposed to be called it Plymouth, but uh, Plymouth using an alternate alternative theme called text. Now, remember uh, in the previous video, we saw that theme called text, and I wondered, what would that be? Well, it's the three dots. Uh, from the file, user share doc Plymouth readme. This is where he got this information in the box. Uh, it is designed to work on themes with DRM mod setting drivers. Uh, the idea is that the early is that early on in the boot process the native mode for the computer is set is set okay kind of hard to read this long sentence Plymouth uses that mode and that mode stays throughout the entire boot process up to and after X starts ideally the goal is to get rid of all flicker during startup okay it's using DRM, but this is not digital rights management. That threw me off. I was like, what? Digital rights management? I thought, well, that's got something to do with that darn EUFI boot stuff, you know, but no, it's, we'll get on down here and it'll explain it. For the systems that don't have DRM mode settings, drivers, Plymouth fails, falls back to the text mode. It can also use legacy dev F. FB interface. FB stands for frame buffer, I think. Um, okay, DRM is defined as Direct Rendering Manager, and your display adapter for the device driver for it may not support it. During boot, there is no X org to provide graphic support. That's what gives us our GUI X, the X org. Um, so the graphic support must be provided by the device driver for the display adapter. Uh, and then someone says, thanks, but my Ubuntu doesn't, so-and-so, so-and-so. Okay, now, uh, they tried changing themes, just like I did. It didn't help. See, I, I read this, but I didn't read, I didn't read it in enough detail. I didn't read every word on the page because I was skimming. <clears throat> I was in a hurry. And so I probably could have found out. I would have found this the first time if I had read it better. So they changed themes, and that's what I did, you know. Uh, and, uh. And so then uh, down here, this comment, the last comment says, try this and see if it helps. The, the Plymouth themes may have issue with the 16-bit Linux loader. 
if the 16-bit may okay try this again try try reading this again try this and see if it helps the Plymouth teams may have issues if the 16-bit Linux loader runs the commands show shown here remove the six the 16 from the load commands this works for legacy BIOS MBR systems if you if you know, there we go that's what I have is a regular BIOS if you boot EFI oh it's I thought it was EUFI anyway they say EFI check the grub manual for the loc location of EFI files on your system so this is for an older system like mine and it's all the commands to run it's got two sets of commands to run well three actually and the last one is grub make config so and so so and so that is I, I recognize that when I saw it uh, I've used to have to use that a lot you used to have to run that every time you wanted to change grub uh, if you put another hard drive in your machine you wanted it to recognize it you could run that there's different ones there's, there's one just update grub but uh, over, later on in Grub 2, see that says Grub 2, uh, you had, yeah, that's when they changed to the more uh, complicated command you had to run. Um, so, but right below that, someone else says, very wisely, I would test this first because I was sitting there thinking, what if that doesn't work? Then where will I be? <laughs> After boot, when the boot menu appears, hit the E key. Uh, this is in Grub, the Grub bootloader. Then edit the uh, Linux 16 and iNetrid 16 words then hit I don't know exactly I guess you'd have to go by this to figure out what to edit it to <laughs> and then and it, so hopefully I can do that that's that's what I'm going to try to do hit the control X to start booting if it doesn't work the old configuration is still intact thank you <laughs> that's pretty good I'm saying thank you doesn't what the next one just I don't know why it has somebody's name and just a date there but uh, Maybe that's who made the post. I would think it would be everything under the name would be the post, but maybe it's the other way around. Yeah, I guess so. Okay, so I'm going to need to get over here on the machine, and, I, and so I've got this up on my laptop so I can look over there at it. Let's see. How's my videos being made? I'm going to close this so that my system won't be working too hard. Check everything out. <clears throat> okay, I'll leave the browser open to that page. I think I'll close that. Well, actually, let's close it and give it as much rest as possible while it, while it's not being needed. Okay, now. <coughs> we're going to get on the uh, 10 inch tablet so that we can at least show an idea of what's going on. Hopefully, it won't be so laggy. I don't know how bad it ended up being towards the end of that last video. Um, <coughs> but I noticed that I was seeing what I had done a minute, like a full minute ago when I got back over here that's when I realized that there's no point in going on I needed a break and everything else so oh yeah this the system is running in uh, you know XFCE desktop and I was getting ready to search for uh, let's just do that anyway before we start that but uh, and descriptions summaries I'm gonna say descriptions I'm gonna say grub boot I don't know Oh yeah, hitting enter doesn't work. Oh yeah, it did. They 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 answered my <laughs> the Lord answered my prayers. <laughs> you can hit enter and it'll search. <laughs> I think. Did it work? Yeah, it did. I think. I was I, I got so excited I didn't pay any attention. <laughs> the screen yeah it's changed because I think. Yeah, boom boot okay. Boot config. Uh, let's see. A set of libraries of tools for managing bootloader entries. Because huh. I, I, I used to use an app that would. That's not it. It wasn't Boom Boot, but. Okay, but it's supposed to work with Grub too. Not quite sure what it would do. Managing bootloader entries. Yeah, okay. Boom boot config. Probably a few. <clears throat> What's this? Oh, ticket manager. Okay, so uh, I skipped all these others. 
See, I put grub boot, so it's probably, it didn't do grub boot as a phrase, it did grub and boot, separate words, but both words is what it did, I believe. But anyway, it looks like maybe I found something there. Busy box. Busy box is a, uh, Even even a, a terminal needs a uh, um, okay like we have you know we have uh, we're using XFCE desktop well BusyBox is a terminal desktop but it's you know it's not a graphic it's just text okay so uh, saw one that sounded familiar core there it is Corbett Utils. Very utilities from Corbett Project. Placing the proprietary virus power found in most computers. Oh, yeah. Oh, Coreboot. Yeah, they used to call it Linux BIOS. I think now they call it Coreboot. Uh, this can replace, I've always wanted to try that, replace the BIOS firmware uh, in your computer with this Coreboot. I wouldn't try that on a running system I tried on something that what if I've screwed up it doesn't matter you know anyway uh, always wanted to try that because then you could tell I always thought well then you could tell it to recognize now I'm not sure if that would work because it may depend on the hardware too but like tell it to recognize 4 gig you know the maximum on these machines is 2 gig RAM well what if you could tell it to recognize 4 gig RAM or something like that you know or other things there might be I don't, I don't know I had other things in my head that I can't think of right it might be actually more more likely to actually do than that. Secure boot updater. That would be secure boot is EFI or EUFI, I believe. They call it secure boot a lot anyway, the makers of it, Microsoft. Uh Yeah, EFI. Okay, it's not EUFI. It's just EFI, EFI boot manager. So I don't want that. I don't even have this machine. Doesn't even have that. And I don't ever. I usually you can't do what you want to with Linux. With if you 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 can Fedora will support it, but usually it fouls up things. And I usually turn it turn it go to legacy BIOS mode is what I usually do. telling how much I can't see the you know the rest of the oh there it is it goes away oh I need to change the theme oh there's a whole lot more yeah okay more themes for grub too but I don't want more themes. And that's for Grub. That's not for... Uh, <clears throat> the, the Fedora boot screen is a different theme besides the Grub theme, themes. I don't really care about getting more themes. And the default ones are clinging. I played with them a little bit a long time ago. And you start playing with themes, some will work, some won't. And you have to... Used to, it's been a long time since I did it. They were real particular about the image sizes, you know, like I, I would put custom boot images and stuff instead of the default ones and made my own sometimes, but you had to get them exact size. Couldn't be over so many, you know, megabytes. Couldn't be over, I don't think they can be a megabyte. And then they couldn't be over, it had to be exact re uh, resolution, you know, like, you know, 640 by 480, you know, whatever. And not, not that in particular, but just something, you know. And, and But you didn't know what you had to guess at it <laughs> until you got it right. And it depended on... Uh, I never did quite figure out what it depended on, actually. I think it depended... 
depending on what grub. This was in, in uh, le- they call it legacy grub. I call it grub one and grub two, but everybody call it, they all call it uh, grub, legacy grub and grub two for some. I don't know why they don't just say grub one and grub two. But. Okay, so, uh, yeah, I've got all lots of grub tools and all that stuff, but there's nothing that, the one that is grubby, command line tool for updating the bootloader. Now, that's what we'll be running at the end of all this. There, you, There's one, let's see, I paid a little more attention, there might be a graphic one. I don't see it, I see one. And I don't think there's a one made by the Grub project, I think it has, you have to get uh, a graphic one, I think you had to get I'm gonna say aftermarket one, but uh, you know, for lack of a more a word, uh, lack of another word that I like to use, third party. I don't like that whole thing. They make third party. You know, every, every they write when they talk about third party, they act like it's something dirty and bad. You know, kind of software, not well written. But, uh, well, if you're gonna use third party software, then it's probably we're not guaranteeing anything's gonna work at all. You know, and all that. But uh, <clears throat> it's just anyway. I'll, I'll digress. Okay, so um, yeah, CD image editor, ISO master. Yeah, <laughs> see, I've got everything under the sun in here, Grub and Boot. Yeah, because I have both Grub and Boot. Okay, so but I figured it was better to look through it than to do another search and lose what I had so far. But it might have been in um, Yum Extender. You could do a two-word search, and it would treat it as a phrase automatically. From what I remember, I know I had a lot easier time finding things in there. <clears throat> That's for sure. Yeah, I wasn't going to look through here, and then it, when I saw, well, it's already up, and it takes so long to get it up, get DNF up and going, and having to search through all the, you know, repositories and everything. I thought, well, let's look. But now I'm spending a long time doing this. Plowmouth. There we go. Graphical boot animation uh, and logger. Now, this is what we have. This is the default for uh, Fedora. Let's see what we do have. Okay, we've got Fade Throbber. What are these themes? Plugin label. Plugin script. That we don't have. What is it? Boot Splash plugin for Plymouth that features an X. Sensible, scriptable boot splash language that simplifies the process of designing custom boot splash themes. Well, I don't want to make a custom theme. I just want one of them to work. That's all. There. I thought I saw login, but that just says two step plug in. Boot process starts with processing animation, syncs. Okay, that's just the way it looks when it boots. Whoops. Fade in, hot dog. Yeah, it's not installed. Solar, spin, spinifity, which is the one I've got it set to now. That's a theme. Okay. So those are pretty much all just themes. As far as I can see, there's themes in that script. Uh, for editing and making your own themes, but I don't want to do that. Now, Favel. <coughs> there's, there's install. See, there's an duplicates because they're different. Um, you have to page over. Where's the, the thing? is so hard to get a hold of. Different versions. And so, you know, these were all installed by default, so they, they're, the new, they're the one I want. Okay, so I don't see anything else. I already did this before, too, or 
I already did this before I even went and installed Bay Desktop. There's not any, I did not find any, you know, thing to help a, a, a graphical interface to, a, you know, to do anything with Plum out. So. Python stuff. Python is a programming language, if you don't already know that. And so, um, you could, when you see Python, you could be looking at something to edit Python with, or you could be something written in Python. And there's a lot of apps that are written in three or four, three, you know, like three or four different languages too. So, and I've tried different ones, and sometimes one will work better than the other on my on whatever system I'm on. Python usually works pretty good. It usually doesn't give have it doesn't end up being a, a buggy very often. <coughs> I don't know if it's the program or the the uh, authors, <laughs> though, <laughs> couldn't say that like to write in Python, you know. I thought I was really close to the end of all this. <laughs> But it was just, uh, see, Ruby, Ruby Gem, tools for creating, working with, and running Rails application. <clears throat> you ever, Ruby on Rails was one of the first web applications I ever heard of. Um, see, but there's more to it than that. See, that's a boot snap. Ruby Rails apps uh, faster documentation, Twitter. It, it, you can see like Twitter, Bootstrap. Okay, so that's, I guess it's not a Bootstrap for a machine, but for a web server, I guess. I don't know. I'm not, not that uh, knowledgeable about all that. I just, when I see Bootstrap, that I usually, that involves something. Uh, I forgot exactly what it does. I used to actually know, but it's something to do. I always see it in to booting your operating system, you know. Usually it's for remote booting. I remember. Oh, what's this? Open source leg legacy BIOS implementation. C BIOS. Oh, it's another BIOS. As a core boot payload, it implements these standard BIOS calling interfaces at typical x86. Oh, okay. How about that? <coughs> First stage, see, there it is, U, U E F I. That's why I get that. But they just call it E F I. Some people call it E F I, but initial U E F I bootloader that handles changing to a trusted full bootloader under secure boot environment. This package contains a version signed by the U E F I signing service. I think the official name of it is U E F. Maybe people just don't like it. They just drop the U because it gets. It's hard to say it. U E F I. I don't know. I've never seen so many bootstrapping apps. I didn't know <laughs> there were so many. Boot splash for uh, sugar on a stick. Simple kernel loader which boots from a fat system. Oh. Huh. Sys Linux. Oh yeah, you see that on every. Anytime you set up a a uh, USB boot stick for Linux, you're going to see six Sys Linux files in there. I thought those. Were, I didn't know that that was a kernel loader. Didn't really know what they were. TFTP, that's what you use to boot uh, 
if you turn on the server, you set up a server, and then you can boot to it from it. You can boot remotely on another machine from it. That's part of what you need for doing like pixie boot over the network. Oh, you boot loader images for RMB7 ports. Hmm. Why would you? <clears throat> Why is it? I don't know. I mean, usually you, when you do that, I thought you just did download the ISO and then put it on, you know, a USB or a CD and, or an SD card and then boot it on your ARM device. But RMB7 is like your phones use ARM processors, Raspberry Pi, ARM8. I don't know why you would install this on your desktop. You boot utilities. That's that's the uh, bootloader. One of the bootloaders that that allows you to boot different images or multi images on a on your phone or or a, a ARM a system with an ARM processor. What's this? Oh, for Chrome Chromium OS, huh? There's a bootloader. Boot utility. Oh. Fedora has got to where it supports a lot of hardware now. It's pretty cool. A lot of it I haven't ever got to mess with. It. Too busy just trying to keep what I got going. <laughs> Vertic physical machine to run on KVM. That would be really cool a thing to be able to do. Have a completely set up system and then turn it into a, you know, a virtual machine running in KVMs for virtual machines. Another another one besides, you know, uh, uh, box, what do you call it? Something box that I use all the time. Virtual box. I think we're actually to the bottom of all this now. Let's see. When you put, you see, I hate these ones that, that disappear when you're not on them because you can't get them to come back up. They just won't come up and save your life. I need to change the theme on this thing, I guess. Okay. So there is nothing that looks like it would help me in this search results. Can I get to the top by doing that? Yeah. Except for that one. Windows USB installation media creator. Oh, I've never seen that before. I'm finding this is what happens. This is <laughs> what happens when I try to find things. I end up finding things that I, I, want, I think are really interesting, and I, I'm not going to get sidetracked. I, a lot of times I'll take a bunch of screenshots so maybe I can find it again, but then usually it takes too long to look through all my screenshots. But uh, there was this one thing here, Boom Boot. Let's see. Set of libraries and tools for managing bootloader entries. It's a boot manager for Linux. Oh. Using bootloader supports bootloader specification for boot entry configuration. It requires BLS compatible bootloader to function either the system D boot project or grub2 with BLS patch. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm not going to get into that unless my, what I'm planning on doing here you know doesn't uh, doesn't work okay so let's get out of this I'm just gonna spend forever <coughs> those in there as root to okay we're gonna log out then we'll hit restart and of course that whole time I, I forgot that I'm showing desktop stuff and I'm doing it on the camera I forgot all about that uh, you couldn't see that at all to save your life. Dang it. Yes, I sidetracked super easy. Well, I just thought I'm already there, and it takes so long to get a search done in DNF. I thought I wanted to look through it. Okay, now when this gets in here to the bootloader, I'm going to hit E when it gets to grub. And I think you do it right here. Yeah. Okay, I hit E, and this is what I got. This screen full of commands. Now, it says set params, Fedora 41915, so also the kernel server edition. Yeah, I can page through here with my, my arrow keys. Okay, now, it said I need to uh, test it first. 
uh, hit the E key, edit the Linux 16 and Inetrid 16 words. Okay. I don't actually know how to edit them though. The thing it shows in there, that's what those commands um, do is it just automatically opens up an, a text editor, does the edit and you know automatically for you by running those commands uh, I think well actually it doesn't open them up it just does it with a it's kind of like a remote text editing you know sort of well it would be if you were doing it on the remote terminal but anyway um, which is how I would do it if I was going to just run those commands I'll do it on the remote terminal because I can copy and paste those commands into it um, yeah, because uh, it would be really hard. Now, let's see if I can find those 16. See if they're even in there. Those. Uh, sixteen bit. Sixteen bit. Okay. Let's see. Linux 16. And I entered 16 words. I don't know. When he says edit them, he's kind of assuming you know what you know what he's talking about. Can you just take them? You can't just take them out. You've got to take out all reference to that. I know that much. Root. No floppy. There's a whole lot more down there. Okay, I'm just paging on down. Entered on it. Prams. At the bottom it says press Control X to start. Control C for a command prompt or escape to discard edits and return to the menu. Pressing Tab lists possible completions. Okay. Now, <clears throat> or you can edit what's in there. You know, I've done it uh, like recently to uh, start up a virtual. Uh, I'm sorry to start up a remote desktop on the on the uh, Fedora net install ISO image. You could uh, just add a few couple of little short commands to the end, and it will start up a remote desktop server. And then you can log into it on your other on your other machine. And that's how I did. You know, was able to do uh, desktop videos of installing on this Net Pro Max. It was really cool. So, and I've had to do it before when the system wouldn't boot to get, you know, I'd find things, you know, on the internet, tell me what to put in and where and uh, do it to get it to boot. But what I'm not seeing is uh, anything about 16, because there's so much in there. But I'm at the bottom, so I'm going to work my way back up. I don't see anything <coughs> that says 16-bit uh, or uh, Linux 16 or Inetrid 16. Let's look for Inetrid. We'll go trying to page on over to the uh, ride. It takes forever. It just doesn't. <laughs> oh, no. It's jumped to the end. I don't think there's any hidden text. I was wondering if some of it was hidden. But I don't think so. Yeah, in Grub, uh, Grub 1, you used to have to edit the. Uh, the if you wanted to. Uh, 
at another operating system, you had to find out the exact, you know, command to put in there, and you had to add it manually in the uh, Grub config files. But you don't have to do that anymore. Grub2 does that automatically. You can just tell it to update Grub, and it'll find any hard drives as long as they're working right and everything. It'll find them and add them to your Grub and everything. So that's pretty cool. <coughs> OVM, just go swap. Net frames. I do not see anything like what they're talking about in there. Uh, of course, they're saying to edit uh, etc grub d. So um, I don't know. I may try it, but I really do hate. Okay, I think I might make backups of those files before I do that. Yeah. I'll see if I can go find those files, look at them in the text editor, and then I will. And then I'll probably still run those commands to do what I'm wanting to do. Okay, yeah, because there's nothing. There's no. There's absolutely nothing I can see that that I have a you know any idea that it would. Uh, there's no no mention of 16-bit anything. Okay, <clears throat> so you have to be in a more advanced in, in editing a group menu than I am to uh, um, and unless that person don't actually know <laughs> they either know a whole lot more than I do or they don't know what they're talking about because uh, that's not there all right so um, there maybe there's more see uh, grub 2 has all the it has all the file it has a bunch of files in different folders they all work together Used to there was just like three files to the grub one, you know, you could add in grub config was the one you added it all. Now you don't add a grub config, you, it won't stay in there if you do. Um, you have to add it like, well, for instance, etc grub dot d, and then there's forward slash 10 Linux. Uh, for, oh, this is adding more than one file. So anyway, um, you have to edit a bunch of different files. It's actually harder to manually edit in Grub2, but if you do it, figure out how to find a uh, way to do it. If you let it do the automatic stuff, as long as you can, that'll take care of your needs, and it's really easy. Okay, so um, and press Control-X to start, Control-C for command prompts, escape to discard. Okay, I want to just escape. Okay, now we're back to the boot screen. And I can just hit enter on the, it's still on the top, you know, the newest kernel. And uh, <clears throat> it'll boot up. And we'll just let it boot up and then I'll get back on my machine. <clears throat> and uh, and I'll get in Midnight Commander. I like that's pretty. I like that boot screen. Um, I always thought it had gotten kind of ugly for the last several years, especially the one for the server that was just that little blue and white line, a little fat blue and white line. That's just a white line, the progress line down there at the bottom, but uh, it just looks nicer. I li I got used so used to that balloon thing that uh, that's actually what I wish was there right there, and that squirrely thing going back and forth. I wish it was just that balloon thing. Oh, now I want to edit my <laughs> now I want to edit make my own custom ones. That's what I would like. And I think there was something like that in the old one. I don't think it had that swirly line. I think it had. I've seen it before, but I think it had the balloon on a on that graphic in that background. <coughs> All right, it's ready. <coughs> it boots up a heck of a lot faster than my Fedora 28 system because I added a bunch of stuff that ended up not working and hanging up the boot. And I still haven't fixed that. I'll probably just upgrade it, reformat it to Fedora 29 once I get done with everything else. Okay, back on the desktop. Now we'll open up our uh, web browser again. And I guess I will. This is probably the simplest thing to do once it gets open. Is uh, and that screen so bright on that laptop with this all white background? Get off that page.
Sorry, <clears throat> I choked. All right. <clears throat> um. I think I'll do restore previous session. Okay, now that will get me to where I was before. <clears throat> Actually, I'm going to put it on the right. <clears throat> and then this one, I'm going to go back to my remote admin. <clears throat> Okay, now, <clears throat> go to the terminal, making sure everything's working here. <clears throat> now, I'm going to do Midnight Commander. <clears throat> oh, yeah, I'm going to need, well, I can just flip back and forth. Okay, so when I get down here to the commands... <clears throat> that they said to run CP I, I, don't, I haven't looked up to see what that actually mean, stands for but I know what it does it edits the file <clears throat> and uh, etc grub D okay and the file is 10 Linux okay etc grub D so let's go there first ah. okay <clears throat> Now it's, oh no, it's not. I thought it was out of order, but that's folders. <clears throat> there it is. Grub D. Okay, now see, we got all these files. These are the, <clears throat> the grub files I was talking about a while ago. 10 Linux, I believe. Oh yeah, the mouse doesn't work <coughs> in there. <coughs> Okay, grub D10 Linux. And I just want to view it, so I'm going to hit F3. I don't want to mess it up. It's a helper script. The comments at the top <clears throat> usually tell you what's going on with it, what it is. There is a search in this application, I think. <clears throat> well, let's just try to look. It's a pretty long file, though, so let's see. What was it we were going to... We're going to change... Oh, and then we're going to go to root etc grub, grub 2... 10 Linux original. I think it's going to replace... This one with the original. That's what it looks to me like. <coughs> okay, so, um, Linux 16 and an Inetrid 16 words. Okay. I don't think you can just hit control. You can't just hit control F to search in here. You might cut in the browser. What just happened? Oh, it opened up a dialog. <clears throat> oh, it is searching. Okay. It does work. Control F. Regular expression. Okay, so-and-so, so-and-so, so-and-so. I want to look for... Already forgot. Let me get my lap. <clears throat> I need to be able to look at them both at the same time. You know, just glance back and forth. So, uh, sixteen bits is what it looks like we need to be editing <clears throat> according to that command. 
I'm just going to search for 60. Oops. What's it doing? I'm hitting control F, but it's not. I think it's just finding it again. Oh, seven <clears throat> is the search. <clears throat> now that that affected the browser and the uh, oh F seven turns the correct browsing on and off. This feature is places to move cursor in the web pages. No, allowing you to select text with the keyboard. Oh, okay, and correct. No, I don't want to do that. <clears throat> I want to search. 6-T-E-N-B-I-T. -E -E Normal. Case sensitive. Backwards. Whole words. All tier sets. <clears throat> Regular expression. Hexadecimal. Wild card search. Oh, we got rid of. Okay, <clears throat> why did the searcher, when I hit control left the first time, why did it search for me? I don't understand. See, uh, this, this since I'm only viewing and I'm not editing, I won't, <laughs> I won't uh, <clears throat> mess up the file. Well, it was a lot longer file than that, though. I want to get out of it. Let's see, how do you get out of the file? Quit. X, go to, I think you just hit escape twice, yeah. Okay, now, <clears throat> 10, what is it? Yeah, grub D, 10 Linux, and then the other one's uh, ETC grub 2, 10 Linux original, okay. Grub D, 10 Linux. <clears throat> Okay, well, I didn't. Let's look in there one more time. Well, I got familiar with this when I was trying to set using all this to try to setting up my uh, uh, DNS server. I think I met, I think I did something strange because see, now there's a whole lot of text again. Yeah, it's too much for me to read through and try to find it. Well, it's thousands of lines there <clears throat> so I can't believe there's that much in there okay control find doesn't do anything okay 20 Linux I want 10 Linux all right now view all right <clears throat> now what was the fine search is seven if seven doesn't do it it's got to be f7 I don't know why they don't have the F there. <clears throat> and again, no, I do not want to do that. Okay, 16 bit. Oh, it's still there. Try it again. No, that didn't find it. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, Linux 16. There we go. That's what's in that note where it says try this first. Nope. <clears throat> okay, so it's not in that file. Now the other file, the one that it's, I believe it's going to replace this one with is etc root oh, root etc root etc. Why would there be a root etc? Let's go over here. And go into the root directory. Root etc. <clears throat> root etc. Grub two. Oh, okay. Root etc. Grub two. Oh, it's a very long file. Okay. Yes, I don't see it. 
you know, the right side's not in alphabetical order. <clears throat> and I had that set to make it make them stay in alphabetical order because it's really hard to whatever weird order they put it in. Well, they've got the capital letter ones on top, and then then I guess it's in alphabetical order after that. That just really confuses me. Okay, so root etc grub ten. There is no root etc grub ten. Root, and then it's not a folder; it's a file. Etc grub ten. I usually just look anyway as I go through, <coughs> just to make sure I'm not confused. But. There is no ETC anything. And a Conda Kickstart file, that's the installer configuration file, <clears throat> which is, well, I don't have to fool with that right now. I like to back those up and keep them. Okay, so um, what I'm worried, okay, here's what I can do then. <clears throat> Uh, there is no file over there. Let's see. Now that'll bring me back over here. So I'm going to open up the uh, etc grub uh, d10 Linux. 10 Linux. And then I'm going to open it up <coughs> F4 to edit. But all I'm going to do is save as. Now how do you do a save as? Actually. Let's do this. Let's just copy it to my documents. That's what's good about Twin Panel File Managers. Okay. Now, 10 Linux. Five, F5 will copy it to, to documents. Preserve attribute. Yep, there it is. Okay, so now I got a way to fix that. <clears throat> Even if I had to do it in a, a lot, you know, and boot to a live USB stick or something, fix it. I can just copy that back over, and we'd be back where we were. <clears throat> okay, now. Um, and the other file, I don't know, uh, maybe I don't understand that command, but I do not see, I do, there is no root etc grub 10. Maybe that's what they're doing is backing it up over there. You know what? I think that's what they're doing. I guess if I'd look up and see what CP dash a, you know, command was doing, I might find that out. Okay. Then pseudo said, I E. S sixteen bit so and so so and so etc grub ten Linux. I think that's gonna put that in there. Yeah. Putting those putting those lines in there. And then we run grub, grub make config. Okay, so yeah. There's no other files involved. Okay. Now I get it. ETC grub two ten Linux. Okay, I think that command is gonna back it up into just the root directory which is fine and uh, which is not there now but I think it will be after I run the command actually we can go find out how do we get out oh F10 <coughs> okay now I'm gonna actually run that command I wanted to under get I had to pour over it enough times I don't need to do sudo because I'm logged in as root Copy the command. Sometimes when you copy commands out of these little boxes and things on web pages, they don't do right. So pay attention that it looks right and that you're getting the whole command. I mean, you don't want to try to do it all at once. You might be able to do that, but it's better to do them one at a time and see that it works. Yeah, let's see. Original. Let's see. Yeah. Okay, now I'm going to hit enter. It worked. Okay, now before I go back and do that again, I'm going to go into Midnight Commander, see if I was right about that. Okay, etc. Grub D. It went back into the same folders on both sides for some reason. 
I'm going to go into root, root. Now we may have ETC, grub D, so and so, so and so. There it is. That's what it did. <clears throat> so that's what CP space slash a, uh, dash A, so and so, and then that, all those long commands, that's what it did. So, or you could use min that commander and the way I did it. And I'm just going to leave that where it is and uh, get out of min that commander. But yeah, if you're like me and you're used to run, using some sort of graphical interface, <clears throat> then uh, and it's much safer to do it that way than to, you get that command wrong even copy and pasting you can get it wrong you know now this is kind of tricky let's see etc grub d linux 10 yeah as long as that file was i'll trust this command rather than trying to find that spot and manually edit it myself um Of course, you are copying this from a, some sort of form, but it is Fedora projects. Let's well, ask Fedora. So I would trust this now. If it was just any old forum, I would be leery about that just being a mistake. It could even be a malicious thing somebody did. So said IE so and so. Let's look at it again. Said IE ends with 10 Linux. Okay. Said IE ends with 10 Linux. Okay. I'm going to hit enter. Now. Well, I couldn't find, well, we can go back and open. Now, let's go see if we can find a 16-bit. What I th think it did was tell it not to use 16-bit. That's what I understood we were doing here. <clears throat> so let's go see if we find the word 16-bit in, uh, in that file, etc grub d 10 linux. Where are we? ETC. It keeps going back to the default folders. ETC grub D. 10 Linux. And we'll just view. Now we'll do uh, searches F7. No, we don't want to do that in our browser. Uh, what was it? 16-bit. S-I-X-T-E-E-N-B-I-T. -E -E ah, I don't know. This searcher may not um, find partial words. I thought I'd, it was set to default to find... <coughs> Normal. <coughs> okay, sends it backwards. Whole words. You see, it doesn't. It's not set on whole words. Backwards. I don't think I need to do backwards. So. Well, I've run the command, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, trust that it worked. Because in that whole long thing. I will never find anything. I mean, look at that. There's uh, 12,875 line, line lines in this file. That, I never knew that file was that long. <laughs> <clears throat> or any of those files were that long. Okay, now how do we get out of there? F10. Yeah. Now, oh, actually I could have hit. Well, that gets it out of there, too. Usually, you hit escape twice. To get out of the app, you hit F10 for sure. Okay, now. Now, we need to update Grub. So, make we're going to update the Grub config. That's what that command does. It's like, well, it says make config. If you didn't have one, it would make a new one. But um, I wonder... Boot grub grub config. Let's go find that and back it up to before I uh, update it. Grub two make config o. Oh, although I don't know if that would. Well, I have this other original file, so yeah. If I can just go to boot grub two. Grub config. Okay. 
Let's go to Midnight Commander again. You can leave the app running and just go send it to the background, but I keep thinking I'm through with it. Okay, so we want to go to uh, Boot. There it is. Grub to Grub Comfy. Right, where is it? Right there. Grub CFG. Now, F5 is copy. And I think you can just hit enter. I copied it to the wrong place, so. Grub config. I'm going to have to delete that. That could be bad. I might cause it to jack things up. How you delete? F8. Yes. Okay, now what I forgot to do is go get in the right folder. So pay attention. Documents. Normally I would have this in their own folders and everything. Grub config. Now then, copy. The more I use this, the more I start remembering things, but I haven't been using it lately. Okay. Copy. Grub config. <clears throat> now, let's go see what's in grub config right quick. Here's the grub config the uh, in grub2. Automatically generated uh, by grub2 make config using templates from etc grub d, settings from etc default grub. Uh, begin. It doesn't have the warning saying don't edit it. Oh, do not do not edit this file at the very top. Yeah. If you did, uh, I don't know, it used to, you could edit it, but you'd get like one boot out of it and then it would be, or actually I think it would keep working until the next time the system got updated. And then when your system updates, it usually runs grub uh, config update, you know, update grub, and then you lose everything you did. It gets really aggravating. I tried it once, once or twice. I couldn't figure out how to edit all find all those other files and edit them they were much harder to figure out how to edit but everything's completely different than grub one all this uh, syntax in here is completely different and this one has 7,333 lines in it wow why did it end up having so many lines in it okay <clears throat> okay so now I've got a backup of the two main files that I'm editing here so now I don't remember if I copied this I probably did but now we're going to update grub. Grub make config. Oh, boot grub to grub CFG. Okay. No. Guess I'll use the edit paste. Make sure I don't have any extra spaces. Okay. Nope. Okay. <clears throat> there you go. Now, see, some commands actually tell you what's going on. It tells you what it found, all the uh, kernels and everything. Wouldn't it be nice if it fixed that bro uh, broken entry in the kernel? I'm going to see if I can copy that and uh, have a record of what, I, what all I've done. <clears throat> I'm a bit worried that I could break everything. Because, I mean, the machine is working. It's just not... I'm not got, I don't have that graphical boot screen that I want. I mean, it's working. <laughs> I'm, I'm risking making it not work at all. So I'm a little, I've already done it now, so it's too late to whine about it now. <laughs> it's too late to get cold feet now. <laughs> but uh, really just now hit me how risky all this is. But I did save ways to get back um, to it. Okay, and uh, I think I will. Sometimes I do it this way. I'm going to leave it like that. I might want to copy the whole page in there. You know what? This time I am going to do that. Okay. I did. I emailed all this to myself, but uh, okay. Yeah. Okay. 
I wanted to have space at the top for me to type. Oh, well, there is. Okay. I'd want to try to do, make an annotations that tells me what I'm writing and what other people are writing here. All right. <clears throat> All right. Now we've got everything that I've done on record. <clears throat> okay. Now. Um, just gonna leave it like it is. I could I started to clear it, but there's actually no point in doing that. Okay, <clears throat> get over here on the camera again. Can't get to the spot. Just switch. Ever since it got old, which was about eight years ago, it uh, <clears throat> it skips. It doesn't want to stop on the on the you know this four port KVM switch, and it doesn't want to stop. You can't just push the button in all the way. You kind of have to push it in halfway. And guess it where to when to let go of it to get it to stop on the next one. <clears throat> okay, uh, log in. Reboot. Now, let's see if we get a graphical boot screen or if we get nothing. Now, that's going down. So, for, for a second there, I was excited. <clears throat> but that's shutting down. So, that's not broken. The theme's still there. There's our uh, Zeus BIOS welcome screen. <clears throat> I like that it. I like that it shows the model number of the uh, motherboard and everything right there. Now we're booting up. Scrub still works. I hadn't thought about that running update grub. Actually, I think that's one of the things they suggested to maybe fix, you know, your kernel not working. Okay, now that part still works. That's the part you see before you get to the logon screen. <clears throat> if this don't work and it's still not broke, then I may leave it as is because I can still get into uh, XFCE. It'll still function exactly the way I need it to, and I can put it out in the garage and have my server working, and maybe at a later date, if I get all interested in it, I can always go back and try again. Maybe I'll run into something or decide to search again and run into something. <clears throat> Just like it was. Okay. Um, first I got to log in. I think I'll just do start. I'm not going to worry about, I thought about running that other command that, uh, switcher thing actually yeah if I run it last time I ran it for trying to do mate and it couldn't do mate and then it jacked everything up okay so we're just back like we were 
we do have a graphic selector. Always did. You know, we've had that. I, I think I've always had it. I've had it for a while anyway. So anyway, I can log into Don. Default is root. I don't know why it didn't say root. Or I can log into... Uh, <clears throat> Maybe this is that thing I installed. No, that was already there before I installed that other thing. That other thing is just for switching... I forgot the name of it, but it's just for switching the default desktop. But it doesn't support mate of all things. Doesn't uh, doesn't say that. It just doesn't mention it anywhere. And it's when you try to do mate, it won't work. So I guess it doesn't support mate. Hopefully our desktop will be back and everything, since I didn't cause it to have any errors. I guess I can always put one in there, but. Okay, it should be. See, I haven't I haven't set up the KDE wallet, so that password may not be in saved in in the KRFB, the remote desktop app. Yeah, something's still going wrong. Right, let's see if it shows what's wrong. It says something's wrong, but it don't. It doesn't. It's just nothing in there. <clears throat> so I don't know what's going on. I'm not going to worry about the desktop background right now. An update might fix that Any automatically. I'm already getting to where I need another break anyway. Oh, uh, yeah, it's behind. The camera's behind. It looks blue. Well, it's not blue. It's gray. I got the lighting sets so dark. I guess it changed the way things look. But uh, it's like my tablet camera's not working so great. <clears throat> I, I did originally have it set on 50% quality because that camera is an 8 megapixel camera and the ones I use are 5 megapixels and they really the video is only like 2 megapixels. So I think the video on that one is probably around 5 or something. And that's probably too much data for my Wi-Fi network or for the chips on the... Actually, it shouldn't be too much data for my routers but too much data that the phones and the tablet can't send. Uh, that's why I think is why I have trouble with, you know, the cameras getting behind and all that. Um, I think I need to go wired. If I, I still use IP cameras, but go wired instead of wireless. All right, let's see. exactly what I was fixing to do now I just kind of did that by <clears throat> uh, oh yeah okay I'll leave that like it is I'm not gonna run any com commands right now what I really oh I don't need that I know I've got an icon on my desktop for that I was gonna log into the remote desktop so I was gonna do I'll just close the browser for now. Let's work on the machine. Okay. It's saving that password. Um, oh, okay. No, it didn't save the password. So I need to go back over there. Yeah, just like I said, I need to set up the uh, uh, password saver. Right now, it actually might be my friend that I don't have that set up because then uh, I can't accidentally leave that running when I don't mean to. The app's running, but the unintended access is not, not working. Yeah, 
It's, uh, but it automatically generates a random password every time you uh, restart the application. Uh, so, you know, if you had, you know, well, basically the easiest way to do it would be like if there's somebody on, well, I, if I knew that, if, if I had jotted down that auto-generated password, I could type it in, but then I'd have to hurry up and get back on this machine and say okay before it goes away. And I can't really do that. Can't move that fast on this KVM switch. So, uh, <clears throat> That's why I always use that unattended. There we go. Now, yeah, now you can see that it's just a no desktop background. Uh, I don't remember what it was supposed to look like, but I know it wasn't supposed to be just gray. So that's what's breaking on. Uh, I don't know what caused it to break. Uh, I don't know if it's related to all my fixing here or not. It wasn't broken when I started to, earlier today. I've done several reboots and it's still broken, two or three now. So uh, I can see if I can put one in there. Sometimes you can just put it in there and it'll be fine. Background and me uh, menu icon behavior. What else have we got? Desktop switcher. Yeah, that's the, uh, I guess that's that other app I just installed. Well, let's fix the backgrounds first. Yeah, oh yeah, there's the default one. Let's see. Maybe that's what's wrong. It's the wrong size. I don't look right for my monitor. This is more like what my monitor looks like, I think. Just try that one. Zoomed. Sometimes it's that. Centered, zoomed. I guess any of them would really work if you're using Zoom. Centered, tiled, stretched. Depends on what I when I, I use the automatic uh, desktop pic changer and use pictures. I like to use centered because uh, then it. Uh, I'm going to leave it on Zoom for now. Apply to all workspaces. Color change the background. Oh, this one has a changer in it. How cool. I'm not going to use it now, but what do we got here? Menus. Icons. I'm not going to bother with all that. Okay, let's just see if that works. Didn't work. I don't know why it won't work. Let's go back on the original one and see if changing folder images. I wonder if uh, accidentally, sometimes it, something goes wacky and they change to a different color, different folder, and it's not there. But I can see it, you know, the preview, so that won't even, won't even do anything. Zoom, stretched, scaled, stretch doesn't really ever look good. Tiled, if you have a really small image, that works. Um, let's just try scaled for now. Change the background over 10 units. It's not working. Okay, so... Uh, <clears throat> messing with that maybe the something has actually crashed now I'm pretty sure the desktop switcher is that app that I've you know been messing with yeah 
This is the graphic user interface for it. You can either do it in the command line or in the graphic user interface. So XFCE or system default. System default is, I don't know, unless it's, it, I guess it's XFCE, but it could be nothing. It could be, since it's a server edition, it could be a, just a, you know, terminal. Would it be BusyBox, probably, whatever terminal uh, app is, you know, showing, making the terminal work. Change only applies to current display. Okay, so I'm going to hit cancel. Switcher appearance. Move PRFB. Oh, yeah, I've been in the splash screen settings over and over. Okay. So, appearance. I'm just wondering if that would. Uh, Okay, that's the theme. And that's part, I, I didn't like a lot of that theme. Let's see, clear books, clear books classic, glossy. I think I will try clear books classic. May change this window here. I think the themes may be messed up. Nothing's really happening. Maybe in in uh, XFCE may not change until you uh, close the. Now we've got some icons that aren't going to work. No, I could just try a different icon theme. That could have been like that already, huh? Let's go back to Edwada and see. That's the default. That's always the default for a long time. I don't. <clears throat> some parts of it I like, and some parts, yeah. We got some broken icons, and it looks like so. Well, I know I like, I think I actually like Clear Books better than Clear Books Classic. I think. Well, I'm not sure. Let's go to Clear Books Classic. And one thing I do like, well, I don't like the arrow. I want normal, a minus sign there, I think it is, and a box and an X. And then, but it's not changing to let me know, like, as I do it, to let me know what it's going to look like. My eight's not working. My eight Frenza. I don't want green folders. Mist. I like mist, and it doesn't have any problems on it. Okay. Leave the fonts and all like they are for now. Settings. Show images on buttons. Enable edible accelerator. Show images on menus. Enable event sounds. I don't really want any event sounds on this thing. Scaling icons. Okay. We'll leave it all like that. Nothing has really changed. Uh, it may be because of this error that making the desktop not work and everything. Look at the appearance again. Well, no, let's go back to... I know how I got there before. Desktop background. So we'll just do that. But they're showing up as if they should work. I don't know. That looks, uh, that's not square, but it doesn't look, I don't know. I guess it's all right. Let's go back to zoomed, I guess. That was what was there before. Well, it's not working, though. Solid color. Okay. Uh, that one there looks more like a laptop background to me just by looking at the shape of it. Centered. What did I do? I did scaled. Go back to scale. No, let's do centered. Come on. When you let go of it, it goes away immediately. Okay, I'm just going to leave it like that. I don't think that really have a lot to do with 
I don't know, quite know what's wrong, actually. I don't know why it was working and now it's not, you know. But our theme didn't take over, I don't think, that we that I put in there. We have a display. I mean, that seems to be fine. Yeah, so it knows the monitor. 1920 by 1080, 60 hertz. That all should be fine. And profile. Okay, no, I don't want any other displays or anything. Let's open up the web browser and see if it looks like hasn't got anything. Mozilla Firefox. Okay, now now when I uh, use one a lot, I always set up XFCE to set look just like Mate Desktop. I put this these things on the bottom. Instead of using that little short deal there, I use I just put the ones I want to use up here at the top, and I put that. Well, opening the opened app down here at the bottom on you know starting from the left and working over now I didn't get the theme I changed to or if I if I did that's not what I thought I was gonna get because it's got an arrow and a, I don't think the themes are working I think there's something wrong I think that's why the uh, backgrounds not there see what the home page is because it's going to be one of those Firefox pages there we go I like that okay so for the server anyway all right so um file manager see what it looks like yeah I don't well now the icons are fine but maybe the classic theme is not the one I wanted <coughs> logged me in as root and I clicked on dawn but the first time I did that it clicked on you know I made that login as dawn set up you know what I wonder if that thing changed itself just because I named it dawn doesn't mean it was actually no I'm almost certain I clicked on dawn but I'm logged in as root I didn't notice since I don't have to type in the password the way since I have it set up to auto login you know what that auto login might be what my problem is I keep forgetting to check that. Let's turn it off and see. That might be why I'm not getting a chooser. Um, now I've forgotten. Oh. No, it wasn't desktop. It was uh, themes. Oh, Adea. Yeah, appearance. That's what I want. I want to change it to <clears throat> clear, regular clear book, see if it changes any. I don't like that arrow and all that junk. I just want, just want the box, single box, X, a single box, and uh, a minus sign. Let's hit close. I didn't, uh, I think I did successfully. Well, I don't know, really, if I've changed my icons because I haven't used it enough to pay attention to what they looked like. That just reminds me of the uh, one that I used to use. Well, I'm not going to fiddle with all that right now. Okay. Um, yeah, the, the boot, the logon. Okay, whereas root so we can do whatever we want here. Login window. I think maybe that's it. Uh, 
and cut. Background. Water dark. GTK theme. Oh. Huh. Well, that's for the login window. Although, that is a theme, and we found out that themes could be a problem. But what I'm thinking here is uh, automatic login. It's supposed to automatically log into Dawn, but I'm automatically logging into root. Or unless I clicked on root and didn't mean to. Allow manual login. Okay. Well, I'm going to take it out. I'm not going to have an automatic login. And... Pixel density retina display. Monitor. Choose which monitor should display the login. Auto. Okay. Host name. Battery power keyboard. Okay. Quit menu. Yes. Okay. So I would like to change the theme, but I'm not going to do that right now. I'm going to. Uh, oh, okay. User share backgrounds is where the background is. Background color. So I'm going to see if that is what my problem has been this whole time. Okay. Um, we're on remote desktop, right? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> well, I'm going to go ahead and go do it the way I've been doing it because sometimes I can't. I'm going to get off remote desktop. Sometimes I can't do it fast enough, you know, and you know, we don't get... To see what happens. Hopefully, this camera is going to not be so far behind. Not sure. I can't tell. I'll have to just hope it uh, caught up while I was gone there. While I was not using it, I mean. Okay, log out, restart. <coughs> <clears throat> well, now that I've uh, <laughs> figured out how to change the themes, I might start changing them to the ones that I like instead of just looking at the ones I didn't really care to look at. They had, oh, I guess around, for, uh, at least I know for sure by Fedora 23, they started using some I didn't really care to look at. And I used to like them, you know. It's nice to have things that you like looking at, you know, while you're sitting there waiting for it to boot up. So. Okay. I am still curious if running that grub update fixed that other kernel, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. I'm getting tired. So, um, I think right now my main thing is I don't want to break anything else, <laughs> break anything, uh, and leave. Um, and I may, I think I may just, whether I get it the way I want it or not, I have it working to where I can leave it. And so I may do that because I have so many things I want and need to do. I can get this uh, back out in the garage, <coughs> <coughs> then I, and I can get get in, get these other things done and get work back to working on Mom's machine. Get it finished, reformatted to put over twenty nine, and all set up for her, and get it back to her. Then I'd feel more free to do whatever I won't feel like doing. <clears throat> nope. Well, the server just don't want you to have a login screen. You don't need no freaking GUI on a server. That's what they think. Okay. Um, Artics. 
Okay, yeah, default and dawn, just like before. And I swear I went down to dawn. Now it's probably gonna have ask me have to ask me for my password now. It didn't. That's weird. And then that, the remote desktop uh, unintended access, what I've been doing is just putting it in every time. Now let's see what happens if we go to start making a key. <clears throat> you see, I may have a password written down that I want to use in here. Uh -huh. I'm not sure what to do in this case. think all right let's go ahead and see if we can just make a password here seems that your system has no key suitable for encryption Please set up at least one encryption key. Oh. Oh. Oh, I see. I need to make a... Yeah, I guess I haven't done that. So I'm going to cancel it because it says classic. You can do... I think the classic... Blowfish encryption, the top one. Let me go ahead and get on that. <clears throat> I'll show. I'm not. I'm not going to do it now, but I'll show what the heck it is I'm talking about. Okay. Let's see. Desktop. And. Oops. There we go. I decided to just not get on the desktop right then, in case I typed something that I didn't want to show. I remember having trouble, it was a pain in the butt to get this working. And that's one reason why I didn't do it. But so here's where I'm at, and it, it defaults to uh, use a GPG encryption for better protection. And the classic Blowfish encryption file, oh, that's different. I don't think that, uh, I don't think that one will let you just put in a password either. I want you to, so if you got to make a key, then I know how to, well, I had to go find the commands, but I know how to do that, but I, don't, I haven't made one yet. So, uh, I'll do that later. That's what I keep, I always say that and I don't do it. So, yeah, if you want the system to save passwords for you, you got to set that up. <clears throat> and I probably will do that. I just don't want to do it right now. So, yeah, I still have no desktop background. And on any other system, that would really bug the heck out of me. But uh, on on the server, yeah, those are those are. Di I think those are different icons. 
I'm not sure because I wasn't paying a whole heck of a lot of attention. They really don't, maybe not. You know what? I don't think those seams changed. That still looks the same up there at the top right. I don't think they did. <coughs> so anyway, uh, something evidently is broken in the themes. And that's why the desktop background is not working. And, uh, and when I change themes, and I'm logged in as root again. Huh. So something's f funky about the uh, that login screen. That's weird. Okay, let's look at uh, logs. See if I get a log viewer in here. See if I've got a bunch of errors. I'm starting to wonder if the system's messed up. Login window, log out, logs. There's a logs. Okay, there's only one. So we got. <clears throat> we look at look for errors and see what the heck might be going on. I think this is one that's pretty easy to use. sure we are we're on desktop we got sound okay security get manage failed pre desktop org did not receive reply possible cause include remote duplication did not send reply okay I don't know what that is I'm talking about C applet, of error, cannot access VD agent channel, it had spice, <clears throat> well, I'm not using spice anyway, I'm not going to use it, I, I, didn't, I guess it was installed by default, I never have got to learn, I don't really know what it does, the spice, I remember, I kind of read about it a little bit. Then the applicant too large, reducing the file. Failed to start hardware monitoring sections. Okay. You can't click on it and like have it tell you any more information. Let's see. Am I on important already or all oh, oh it's it's a bit slow to respond. Okay. Oh well that's all there is. No, there's a few more now. Oh there's a whole bunch more. <coughs> Let's look at a port important. I don't know if that's where I'm able to read user logs. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's where I was. I was on important. Application security. Let's see about security. That would be the most important. <clears throat> At least some messages in there. Of course, these are just logs. It's not uh, errors or, or intrusion attempts, you know. It's just logs. Let's see, it looks like it's got, yeah, there's a lot, a lot there. I'm rolling my mouse wheel. <laughs> I'm seeing a lot of, yeah, I still got that goofy theme. I see it, yeah, there's that bar, finally. Let's look at hardware now. <clears throat> oh, yeah, there's a search right up there. Okay. And then, uh, speed of us disconnected. Okay, let's go to all, and I'll use the search, because there, there's so many logs in here, <clears throat> log inputs. It seems to be a lot slower than it was earlier, so I'm wondering if my, uh, didn't I reboot? Yeah, I rebooted the routers and everything, though, in between uh, videos. I'm trying to get it to... I was trying to get to where I could search, and instead it made Windows small. That thing must that looks like a you know a search icon, but that may be uh, I don't know what it is. 
There's one that looks like a search icon. Over there, there. Now that brings up a search. Okay. Yeah. Uh oh. It went nuts. Yeah, the remote desktop's not working so great. Come on. I wonder if it would help to, uh, yeah, let's go ahead and try that. I'm going to get out of the disconnect and reconnect, see if it gets, sometimes it'll get better. think it's going to be any better <clears throat> nope it's getting double and triple keyboard entries maybe it'll help if I slow down my typing nope didn't help what is wrong with you now er or error Okay. Didn't I receive reply? Whatever that was. Security policy. Process. See after it. Correctable errors. Collector initialize. Oh. <laughs> let's see. <clears throat> now let's try fail. Fail. Got too many D's now. It was there and then it went away. Okay, same one though. Get manage objects. Oh, there's some more. I didn't think about this before. I, I don't think I've thought about this whole time. I don't know why I don't, you know, uh, when you, <clears throat> Windows or Linux, if you have a applica a application error, the probably the default advice is to look at the logs. And I forget that most of the half the time. I just go straight to Google. Well, for one reason is because look at the logs, <laughs> how much there is in there and how hard it is to decipher. And even if you find the error, uh, I have better luck searching Google most of the time. I guess that's why I do that. But So if all else fails, I'll look at the logs, climb out. Okay, let's see. Now, here we go. This whole time, though, I should have done this at the beginning. Service stop. I don't see anything that that I can you know that makes any sense to me in those. Just a bunch of question marks there, and then that service stop, service start, started, uh, terminate, climb out, boot screen. Oh, started, terminate, climb out, boot screen. Four. Four times, I guess. Oh, there we go. You click on it, you get the rest. Received from process ID 288. Actually, it looks as though it was working properly there. I just searched for Plymouth in all logs. I'm not searching for errors or anything. Just everything to do with Plymouth. But that same thing goes over and over. Different numbers at the beginning, looks like, but... 
system D, user execute, user lib system D, and then it's cut off. <clears throat> oh, there's the rest of it. When I clicked on it, it went blue and brought that up. System D, lib, system D, host name, address, terminal, rest success, priority file. Okay. So I don't see anything that's going to help me. Like I said, started Plymouth, switch root service. Okay. Let's see. Tell Plymouth to write out runtime data. Looks like that's working. And then switch root. Looks like that worked. I see that all the time when I'm watching machine to boot up. Started forward password request to Plymouth directory. Watch. Forward password request to Plymouth directory. Watch. Okay. Same thing again. Receiving. I don't see anything that, uh, I guess this may be about the uh, little boot screen you see, you know. <clears throat> but as far as the login, graphic user login i just don't know where it, why it's not showing up why it's i guess it's installed i mean it should be you, inst you should get that with if you have one desktop or two or three you should still get that's part of i think it's part of plymouth is what i thought let's see if there's anything about login and then log on Oh, there's too many G's in log. Oh. It's taking longer than I expect, so I think it's nothing's coming up. Log in. There we go. <clears throat> Get your fingers off the keyboard and wait. That's my keyboard because it actually has USB, HP multimedia keyboard hub. It's a hub because it's, it's, it has two USB ports in it too. Okay, so nothing that looks like an error or a problem. It seems to me that as far as the system is concerned, there's no... Uh, no errors with the login. It just doesn't have graphic login. Desktop. Let's see what that shows. Maybe we'll see something about that background not working. Oh. I mean, a job at free desktop or debus, debus, no reply, did not receive a reply. Possible calls include the remote application did not send a reply. That should be called security policy. Oh. I thought I saw something that said mate. Looks 
successfully activated XORD free desktop. Fail to execute program free desktop. Problems permission denied. Unconf unconfined. See if we can get a screenshot of that. I don't have this one set up to automatically just save it to screenshots. It keeps asking you. <laughs> okay, so um, no reply. Security policy. But I never thought of that. It's maybe why we're not getting our. I'm not sure, but maybe why we're not getting our. Uh, well, actually, <laughs> I'm looking at desktop, though. Yeah, desktop errors. Okay, so I wonder if this is. Security policy is stopping my background from working? I was thinking it was a boot screen. I thought, oh, I think I found something. That's, but this is not, this is uh, freedesktop.org. This freedesktop.org hasn't got anything to do with the Plymouth boot screen. This is a desktop. But it was working before and then it quit working. So that doesn't make any sense. Maybe an update. Well, the, the thing is, my updates are at 3 a.m. So it didn't just. It just quit working just, you know, within the last hour. So I really don't understand that. Well, maybe the, from what I remember, I don't know, was it, I don't remember now. I guess I'll have to look at my videos maybe. Um, maybe those commands I ran to try to, you know, fix, make the uh, login chooser come up. Maybe it broke. Maybe it broke. Uh, caused this problem here with the broke. Broken, some things broken on the desktop. I can't remember now when that started. Before I ran those commands or after? Policy kit. Oh, kit. I remember that. I don't remember what it exactly does, but I remember it. I mean, policy kit, that's they got to do with security stuff with SE Linux stuff. Okay, so I don't know, and I'm getting tired by the minute, so. I'm get, kind of getting too tired now where I can't really think through anything. <clears throat> I just realized that the clock is not on a regular clock. It's on military time. Let's see if I can set. I think I'm, I'm, I'm logged in as root, so maybe I can set the clock. Let's see. Layout digital. Format. It's not responding too well, so. Oh, I don't have a time zone set either. Oh, I see. Well, that's fine. 1847 is fine. I really don't want seconds on there. That's not where you set the. Uh,
It started, it did a drop down list and I, I didn't see it. Come on. Now it won't do it. Oh, I had clicked on it on that little icon there. There. But it doesn't stay up. Long enough for me to select it. I think I'll take that out of there right now. Oh. Why isn't it? Here we go. Oh, that's not Canada Central. I guess I have to do US. There it is, U.S. Central. Now, we still have that part right. It's still not on. Uh, I don't know what you got to do to get it off of that crazy time. Oh, 7.50 p.m. There we go. I just wasn't looking good and tired. Yeah. There we go. 7.50 p.m. Okay. Usually it says 12 hour or 24 hour format. That's what I was looking for. I guess that's the way XFCE desktop is. I'm just not used to it because I used to use it a lot on the server. And that, well, that's all I've really ever used is on the server or on some other, well, I had some older, like some of my laptops, I had a Fedora on them and I would use it on there because some, well, I don't remember. I remember I had made on that, that, that Dell 6000 laptop that I used to preview my stream and all that. And what I was just now using to, you know, look at those commands. Uh, I used to have Mate desktop on Fedora 17 Mate desktop on it. That was about the, the newest Fedora distro it could run. Uh, now I'm running the Bane because the Bane is way lighter. I'm run, running the Bane 8 on it, I think, now. Runs just fine. I don't, I don't even know what I'm seeing when I click on that. So um, I'm going to leave it as that. Uh, it is functional. Severing up my website. Let's go back and make sure that it's still doing that before I quit for the evening. I think I'll shut down that laptop now. It's just sitting over there running. It's kind of a distraction because it like go. I think well when I move this mouse, sometimes it moves the la the wireless mouse that I'm using for the laptop because they're sitting over here, you know in the same area and it makes it sometimes it'll wake up and sometimes it'll go to sleep and I'm just something blinking over there just distracted me it goes to sleep on its own but it wakes up sometimes all right now then let's see uh time robot I haven't really looked around my site to make sure that, uh, well, at least it's 99% uptime on that. And it says 41% on Dawn songs. But that's, that's the thing that I don't think is accurate. Uh, I'm almost certain it's not. Um Let's see, Uptown Robot and Mon Static, I think, is what it is. Well, I'd really 
don't think I made any progress. I just I learned I learned plenty. If I could just remember it all, <laughs> I learn stuff every day. But I don't remember. Well, I used to remember stuff. I don't know. I've been doing this, you know, kind of stuff for the last uh, twenty something years now. Twenty, yeah, eighteen, about twenty years, I guess. Ninety eight till now. Uh, and uh, all the, you know, most every day, all and. Um, I love learning stuff, but you know, well, of course, the more you cram into your brain, the less you, the, the harder it is to remember it all, you know, too. But I used to have, I, I don't know, I was going to say, I used to remember 50%, but I don't know what percent I remembered. I just used to remember a whole lot more and for longer than I do now. So uh, that's why I wonder, uh, that's why I'm so, so, um, work so hard at, saving records of it one way or the other that's one reason why i like to make these videos it's actually helping me even if it didn't help anyone else if no one else ever looked at them it helps me tremendously now this helps me um because i have trouble finding this my notes and stuff nowadays you know where did i put them and i can't remember so i'll just go back and watch through the video and and i've got an exact record of what i was doing and where i messed up or where i fixed something or it takes longer to find it you know in a video uh, well, it, assuming if I could find it, like I said, I'm having more trouble finding my files and stuff I save, and sometimes I accidentally if I save them in the wrong folder or something, or don't remember what folder I saved them in. Anyway, it's up. Uh, Bishopco.com has been up for two days, it says. Uh, and so if it's up, then they're all up. That's the thing, because uh, they're all on the same machine. So, dawnsongs.com saying it's been, uh, well, no, this is the other checker, though. Now, there could be one thing, and I guess I really, I just, you know, I put it out of my head. I just forget about it all the time. It, if I can get to it. The thing is, I could be able to, you could say it's down, and I could still get to it. Sometimes it says it's down, and I can get to it. And then I find out what's wrong, and I fix it. But sometimes, a lot of times, I, it, it says it's down, but I can get to it. And what's happening is I'm getting to it on my local network, but it's 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 available here, but not on the internet. And like I said the other, day, I've said this a couple times lately. Um, <coughs> uh, it may I, I suspect that it could be that the GoDaddy uh, URL shortener thing service they implemented is is inter interceding. And then I don't have it set up. I don't really want it set up. I don't need it. And I haven't just had time to mess with it, you know, I didn't think. Uh, I saw it when I was trying to set up my DNS, S, DNS server and to work with GoDaddy. And I, I, I started seeing that. Uh, and I would keep seeing that when I tried to go to my website, it would pop up and say, uh, would come to this. And I was, that's how I discovered it. I was like, what is this D, GoDaddy D, uh, you know, URL short? the heck what's i got to do with my websites and it turns out they've implemented that uh and it keeps popping up saying um, it's not there it's not working or whatever do you want to set it up you know and I'm like, no i don't want to set it up i don't want to use it but um i know i've saw the last couple of days i was looking i just was looking through my videos and when managing them and i saw different Mention, I saw a couple of the videos where I had uh, I saw the titles in them. So I go, GoDaddy, you know, URL shortener. Messing up my videos, you know. Like, let's see. Um, I to, there we go. Go to my videos. Now, I'm in my videos page. If I just search for GoDaddy, I'd probably find some what I'm some of what I'm talking about. Yeah, there's where I was working on the uh, what it requires to register DNS server, and uh, there it is. GoDaddy URL shortener causing the website to load errors. You know, question mark. I wasn't quite sure, uh, but. I think some of those errors that I was talking about are in that video. And uh, that's probably the main one. The 
rest of those are pretty much all about setting up my DNS server. That was what I was doing when I discovered that. Well, let's see. Okay, yeah, this is the you know admin view of it. But um, yeah, here's my description. Give me headaches. Looks like it's stopping my websites from loading. Uh, gives a page not, not there error. I've really got to get back and uh, either that or my browser cache is keeping those error pages, you know. Okay, so anyway, um, yeah, I need to, I need to review this here video. And uh, I think I've got it in my. It does. It see. It doesn't. It doesn't uh, even give the video. When, if you're not on the view page, it all looks different. Uh, everything looks different. I wonder if that'll take you to it. I'm darn sure will. I'm just gonna stop it before it gets started playing. But I need to. Well, here's what I need to do. <laughs> I'm gonna email it to myself. Self, go look at this and follow up on this. <clears throat> but uh, yeah, if you ran into that, uh, you might want to look through that video and see if there's any. I might have I might have found out something that'd help us all. <laughs> what happened? I'm trying to. There we go. I just send that to myself. Uh, that's actually enough to remind me. It's the title of that video. Okay, so. I don't want to edit that page. Let's see. Well, I'm done hunting things and doing all that. Um. <clears throat> Got now how I left that machine. Did I leave it with the desktop running or what? Let's go over there and look. I think I left the desktop running. Yep. So what I'm going to do then is reboot it. I, I, you know, when I'm not working on it, I just want the, it to be logged on to the con. I mean, just in the console mode, you know. I guess I'll stay here that way it won't you know let's sit here and make sure it works but I really do like that uh, boot screen much better than the old the, the default one for the Fedora server I like it better than the one for the desktop <clears throat> I've never really thought that that would make that much difference to me but seeing that it just seems nice I like it yeah see if I had got off of it and got on my other machine then the video would be the wrong size and everything so if I stay here, it'll see the monitor, and it'll get it sized up right. I'm tempted to check that other kernel, but I'll do that later. I'm too tired. That means another another reboot. <laughs> it also would mean if it didn't work, my, my server would be offline. So. Yeah, even with me met working on it today, you see, it didn't, it didn't hurt my... Of course, it hurts if somebody's trying to get there and it doesn't work. They might not come back, you know. But uh, it didn't hurt my overall rank rating, you know, downtime. Uh, yeah, I really do need to see uh, that. That uh, but the one thing I don't get is why is it always on Don? Don Songs is the one that always reports to be down. And it'll say it's down for 48 hours or something. And every, I go to it. Well, the other, you know, the, that's why I lose at least those two checkers because the other checker says it's up. One will say it's down and the other one says it's up. So I decided it might be. The other alternative is it may be that okay, it's up. Uh, it may be the uh, <clears throat> um, the timeout on the checker is too short. It could be 10 seconds or something, and that's, you know, too short for my well. Um, my internet connection, my old speed, you know, my old machine and all that. 
It just may not be coming in as quick as. Well, now, now seeing. Uh, well, you can't see that. I was seeing the boot screen uh, on the camera view there, so I'll probably cut it off. You, usually, what well, if it's? I mean, it's, it may not be as bad as it looks in this preview because this preview I find out is not that all that accurate as to what's really being seen all the time. That's something that kind of fluctuates, just like the Wi-Fi. But uh, it's usually a pretty good indication, though. But anyway, um, I was seeing the blue Fedora boot screen, and that was long past. So, so the camera, the the uh, tablet camera, is getting behind. Uh, actually, it may be doing worse than the little phone cameras. Maybe because I. I set the settings. Today I went ahead and set the settings. I'd been doing it in the, uh, you know, as I was zooming it in and everything, I would set it to 100% quality. And I assume that does the same thing as setting it in the application, the default. to. A, I had it defaulted to 50% quality because I thought, uh, because I, I thought it would help. Uh, it seemed like it was helping, uh, you know, the delay problems with the cameras but uh, but the last few days I've been using it uh, I've been setting it on 100% and it seemed to be working just fine today's the first day that it's been lagging like that so I um, see the thing could be it's got nothing to do with my equipment it could be even it could be uh, just radio interference here in this area you know that's causing that problem because Wi-Fi is radio so um yeah, there behind me, that yellow basket full of clothes. Well, there's my bed's full of clothes, too. And I can't even go to bed until I fold all of them because my sheets are in that yellow basket. So i got to fold the ones on the bed, all my shirts and everything. Then I fold these, so I better quit because i got lots to do before I can get ready for bed. It's 8 o'clock after 8 now. I'm trying to you know go to bed at a... Last night I went to bed at midnight, and I got up at 8... Woke up at 8.30. I didn't actually get up. I laid back down for a while. But I didn't go to sleep. But uh, anyway, try not to get all crazy. I'm, you know, being. I like being up in the daytime. It feels better. And plus, when I want to, do, if when I, uh, uh, well, I have some things I want to need to do outside. Well, for one thing, I, I may go ahead and leave this server just like it is and go put it out in the garage. And then the next thing I need really need to do. I'm pretty sure that that old Linksys router out there is not going to keep up with it because it gets. It, it fluctuates between 2 megabits and 15 megabits, and I think that, uh, I don't think 2 megabits is really enough. To, I don't get a lot of traffic, but when I when somebody might be downloading my songs, if they were doing that, then that might not be enough to handle that. And now that I have 10 megabits upload speed with my ISP, then, uh, um, I mean, I don't want, you know, if, if I started having trouble in my server logs, if I started seeing that, or if I had trouble with my internet connection and surfing, you know, like if I would know it right away. I mean, when I would start looking at my server logs and see that's, you know, too much activity, somebody's hammering my site, then uh, I would have to, you know, and the routers actually, I think you can set like a limit to bandwidth and stuff. I haven't ever had enough traffic to have to worry about that. <laughs> like, for a while, I thought, well, that Linksys is doing it for me, you know, just because. Of, but but the thing is, it's not working right, so you never know. Uh, like when you check it and and you see that it's getting two megabits, that does that's not an all in all indication of actually how much data throughput it actually has. You know, uh, there's all kinds of complicated tests you could do even with just software on a computer, much less having equipment, that I wouldn't really even understand it. I'll know how to do it, <clears throat> but uh, I read about it, you know. I've seen it in videos and talked about it. I've seen it talked about in videos. But um, anyway, there are um, load balancers, which I have load balancers, one or two load balancers installed on it now, I believe. But some of them, are, what you, all you got to do is just install them and they'll run at some default settings. And some of them you have to set them up, you know, edit some config files and stuff. And I haven't even gotten near trying to do that yet. 
so I'm not I can't even remember I'm pretty sure I installed I, I was going to if there was one available that I could install with the net installer I was going to install a load balancer but I've tried messing with them in the years past and some of them are real complicated and hard to set up so I don't know that's the other thing but uh, I do know that the newer my new routers I'm pretty sure they have uh, I can go in there and say, okay, this IP, I have them set to, oh, you know, that machine to always get the same IP address. So I can say that IP address can only upload, you know, so many, you know, maximum five megabits or something like that. Since I have 10, I could probably set it to max five or something like that. Uh, but I really wouldn't want to limit the download to that, though. So I'd have to look and see what you can do. Or use the load balancer in the server itself. I think you can. Well, there's two different types of load balancers. I mean, there's balancing how much work the CPU and the RAM does, and then there's balancing the, the that internet throughput. You know, so I, I, I'd have to. I, I, that's something else I need to look into. Is what do I have on there, and can I? Is there something that I can understand how to use to, to do it that way? Okay, so it does work. I did not get my, I cannot, I don't know, I can't get to the Mate desktop. I, I just, I don't get that, that I should be able to, oh, did I forget something? Okay, before I take off, uh, I just remembered one of the first things I was going to do was going to try out I'm not going to do it now I don't think but let's see uh, I'm wondering if I can type start X space mate that's what I'm wondering just hit me um, I went all into uh, Yeah, XFCE. Well, I'll just go through each one of these pages that I used. Okay, that's to download the. Multi users. Okay, come on. Control. Let's see. Tardex XINet unable to connect to X server connect fuse. Oh, that's some problem somebody was having. Okay, that's not what I'm really looking for. That's just somebody's problem they were having. Oops. not talking about Stardex on here okay that's a another can of worms there <clears throat> this is just uh, okay this is XFCE wiki right or the fedora XFC. Okay. This is an old one. Yum install. This is really more just about XFC. Oh, there's XFCE Wikipedia. It probably won't have the start X command on it. Okay. Now here's how I got it installed. UNF group install, and this is what you do to get it to. It still won't run until you run this this command here, which is echo 
exe siege been session oh and then run start x <clears throat> but the strange thing is on fedora 23 once i ran those commands then the, the, the you know the graphic chooser was there and then it worked but this is what they're telling you you're going to get what i got is what they're telling you you're going to get yeah, there's my desktop background that's gone. I don't know what the heck happened with that. Which, oh, I got a different one on Fedora 28 as well. Okay, so I don't think, I guess I need to see what that one is. Let's see. Switching desktop environments. Oh, okay. Yeah, and this is that application I ended up alternatively. Yeah, see, this part's not working. This, uh, this little, I don't think this is a Plymouth, though. I think this is, well, I guess it's Plymouth, but it's the way it looks, the theme that, that it has in Genome. Yeah, and so what I did today or yesterday is install switch disk and then I tried it out all, you know more and more today and it never did that. Well actually it doesn't support mate. It would probably work if it supported mate. But evidently it does not support mate. More mates installed, but it didn't work. I well I tried that in both videos. Okay, so um Yeah. Oops. That's the that name of that video. Uh oh, what did I get? Okay. Let's just see. Start X command. Let's see. Let's do Linux command. Start X command on Ivy on Ivy. Hmm. Change desktops in Linux. Hold down control alt and tap an arrow key to quickly move from down left to right between workspaces. Oh, that's not <clears throat> they mean like I well, I always say changing desktops like this. Um control alt can't even think where everything is oh control alt tap an arrow key yeah that's one I don't use very much unless sometimes I hit it sometimes I remember it when I'm uh, I use control tab a lot and uh, well that was alt tab and then control tab. That's the ones I usually use. So I can hold down control alt and then use the right left arrow keys. Get to the end, you got to go back. I'm not on the desktop. Dang it. Well, I thought I was fiddling around there. I thought I was on the desktop this whole time. Okay. Yeah, I was searching. 
there's the start X, you know, the, where I was talking about earlier. This is the commands I ran to get, uh, I did this, the mate, the mate version of it and the XFCE version, get it installed at the desktop and then activate it and then start X. That's what it says. That's how it tells you what you're going to get. You're not, it doesn't tell you you're going to get, uh, the, uh, log on screen little graphic like I did in Fedora 23. I ran, it's basically, it's the same commands. I don't think there's anything different for the, this is for Fedora 29, but if you look in the older one for Fedora 23, I think it's the exact same commands, but I don't get, you know, my little log on screen, my chooser. I don't have my chooser where I can choose desktops. And I was looking for that just now and uh, I ran into that. What I was just doing is switching. Let's see, I didn't look at this yet. Okay, here's some variations of Stardex. I know you could do, you know, switches or whatever they want, whatever they call them. Oh, that's uh, color depth, DPI, layout, multi head. <coughs> okay, now this is what I was looking for, but. I don't think I don't think you do that. I don't think you use it that way. I don't think you can do, uh, say, start exit. You know, different desktop. I don't think that's how you would switch desktop. I think start X just starts the default desktop. But how do you change the default desktop in the terminal? Well, I guess we should ask Mister Google that. <coughs> Change desktop. Linux command change desktop. There we go. Let's see what we got. Open it, either open your applications folder and then open the utilities, double click terminal. That's not in the terminal. Can't double click in the terminal. Spot light and type terminal, then double click the search result. You'll look through small window right back. How to use another desktop environment in Linux. That's just going to be the normal, yep, normal chooser. And that is, in, I guess it's XFCE. That's the rats for XFCE, but they're showing they're bent to. That's not at all what I searched for, but I change desktop. I guess I'm not searching right. <clears throat> you need to say Fedora.
Okay, let's see. Use the command line. How do I do that? Let's see. The only thing about desktop is the desktop background on that whole page. Okay. We got here. Customizing the desktop. No, that's still not what we're looking for. These are not commands either. I might have to change that to more than just XFCE desktop. Enum KDE. Mate's not in there. All right. <clears throat> well, then there's no sense in going through that. Okay. Um, yeah, so StartX doesn't, not going to get you there. I'm sure there is a command. Change default desktop. Started to search for that to start with. Sounds like maybe that's Sin OS is uh, Fedora and Sin. So they're they're uh, Sin OS is a I guess it's owned by Red Hat too. I didn't really realize that. I just knew that it was an RPM based distro. And I tried it years ago. It's a server distro. And uh, it's too hard to work. Everything has, almost everything has to be done in the command line. ETC sysconfig desktop. Okay, I don't have that's the one it was telling me to look for and I didn't have it. So I guess I need to make one, don't I? You know, KDE XDM. KDE Genome XFCE. Still don't see mate though. Change desktop from Genome to KDE. Open etc says config file by by the text editor from terminal text editor etc says config desktop set the desktop variable oh desktop equals KDE display manager KDE oh desktop switch application from the extra preferences menu. Switch desk KDE. Yeah. I'm starting to wonder if this will work because they don't mention mate. Seems like it would though. <clears throat> okay, let's uh let's go in there now that I've found some new information. But I will, yeah, be careful, don't mess anything up because it is usable. Okay. Now I'm going to go to Midnight Commander. I've already done this, but let's do it again. Midnight Commander. I'm going to look for ETC sysconfig desktop, which we know is not there. Let's look again, though, in case it got made during all the work I did sysconfig there it is sysconfig etc sysconfig desktop file okay ETC 
A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, A, B, C, D, C, D, C, D, no decimal. Everything's in alphabetical order in that folder. Okay, so there is no sysconfig desktop file. Now, I suppose I could make one, but I have to know the whole... I need an example of the file. Uh, there's got to be more to it than just those two things right there. So, um, at least now I know how to edit it. I'm going to email it to myself. I guess I should be, I'm going to quit. Uh, yeah, I can search for how to make, you know, that file and all that stuff. <clears throat> so I was probably on to it early on. I'm thinking of now, of course, you always think that when you find something new. I might have been on to it right there at the beginning of the day, and I just didn't follow through. That's small text, isn't it? <clears throat> All right, send that to myself and then perhaps, oh, I didn't still check. I didn't check the spelling right. Um, okay, so, um, yeah, it seems that that file's missing. I don't know why it's missing. Uh, it seems like it would have got made by something, but maybe that's part of the thing with the Fedora uh, Fedora server distro is it just doesn't make that. But so uh, that is, I guess that's what's missing. Funny thing is, you still don't see mate mentioned in there, but I know that Plymouth will boot, you know, will show and work with mate. Uh, but I do see that, uh, you know, I tried the other alternative way with that other other chooser and it didn't work. I still don't know if that other chooser is set as a default chooser now, though. But if I make that file, it probably would, it might take that over. You get so far down into your uh, cans of worms and you change so many things, you finally get to the point to where you be, you just might as well reformat. And I don't want to get to that point right now with this machine as long as it's running good. I don't actually... I mean, I can get into XFCE. I would like to be able to get into Mate in case I need to do something, you know, some kind of work in the graphic user interface that I just can't do in XFCE because there's just a lot of things missing in XFCE that's not, that is in Mate. A lot of functions, you know. And I'm, but really for the server, for the most part, all you need is the, you don't really need a desktop necessarily. Especially with the, the better I, the more I'm learning about how to use the, uh, <clears throat> um, the remote terminal, um, and finding the command. You know, see, I never, I used to just do try my best to do everything in the GUI, and uh, but they 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 are making less and less GUI apps for Fedora, and I think for Linux all all together from what I've read in the last several years, five plus years. And I didn't see it because I was using older distros. I was like, well, what are y'all talking about? What are y'all complaining about? I've been seeing it for years. And then now that I'm on the, I've, I finally had to quit using Fedora 14 that had everything. I tell you, the best Linux distro ever was Fedora 14. The most, least bugs, the most functionality, the most GUI apps. It was just wonderful. I wish I could just preserve it and use it forever. Um, if I was a programmer, I've seen people do that, like keep an older distro and update it and make it secure and everything. I remember somebody did that with Fedora 10. Um, if I could do that, I think I would do that now.
because uh, and I would set up my own you know uh, make sure and copy the whole all the repositories so they don't get you know in case they decide to delete them and not have they, they still have them all there in the uh, archives for door does but uh, for me I haven't even uh, it's complicated to me to just ch man you have to manually I can't uh, install or uninstall anything in my Fedora 14 system because uh, I haven't quite figured out how to manually edit the uh, accurately. There's a lot to edit the uh, repos files, uh, repository files, and, and point it to the archives, you know, the Fedora archives. So, uh, and plus it's not a necessity, you know, it's just something I would like to have working. So, ever since they moved all the uh, repos, uh, what, you know, to the archives then you know I can't add or add or remove anything from that system but I really don't necessarily need to there's a couple of things that I think I wanted to uninstall because they were broken and I got tired of clicking on them and then they didn't work you know but uh, that system everything that's on it that works works perfectly just like whenever they was you know actively supported and that's why I'm careful to keep it because you can't a lot of those apps that you can't I can't I need to do something and I can't do it without them um, or I can't do it easily without them because of so many graphic apps being dropped off in the last these years um, it's you know it's really become really important to keep it um, so anyway um, but as far as like a web server you want the newest most secure you know system you can get and my daily user, I want uh, the same thing. So, um, well, I really just went around and around and around. I kept thinking I was going to get it. Kept thinking, just now, I thought, oh, I think I figured it out. Well, I've been doing that all day. So I'm tired, too tired to keep going. <sighs> oh well. Um. And I got, I'm just reminding them, I just kept keep, I keep remembering that it is not a necessity to have all, have, you know, all the desktops working. I just, I don't like things that are piecemeal together or not. Some things work, some things don't. I don't like that. I'd rather, I had told myself at the beginning, well, if I can't get it working, I'll just reformat it and just have uh, XFCE, have the basic server and XFCE desktop, and then I can start, type start X to get into it. That's okay. I just kind of didn't like that idea because I knew I'd forget. I'm afraid I'd forget that command because I forget things much these days. But I guess I can always put a st sticky note on the front of the box or something. But um, but after I went so far into trying to get it working, then I was kind of I don't want to give up. I want to figure this out, you know. But if I mess things up now that the if the desktop backgrounds and all that doesn't start working, I'll be aggravated about that. And I'll be making me want to just start over. Anyway, but I got so many other things I need to do. So I don't know. I may leave it. The thing is, once you leave something and you say, I'll leave it for now, well, it's usually for a couple of three years. For me, that's what usually happens. Um, <clears throat> when these, you know, with these different machines, I'll say, oh, I'll do that later. I just, you know, and then I, Never get to never get it done, so uh, <clears throat> I don't like that. So anyway, uh, there we go. Round and around, merry go round goes. So, um, well, we'll see you later. I'm gonna go now. All right.